All right, Mr. Nips. This is how you make your own wine. Nobody but you needs a video tutorial for this because it's so simple and easy, but you're a dummy. So, I have here an empty five liter jug. Used to be distilled water in it. Uh, it's about 1.32 US liquid gallons. I'll put that aside for now. We'll make a wine out of this uh, wild cherry iced tea. It's a quality brand and we'll make one with just cheap apple juice. I only have two jugs and this is my cranberry juice wine. I already had one of those bottles with my neighbor together. So we'll Here's that uh, cling film and the rubber band. And uh, don't worry about that stuff. This is just uh, yeasty foam. It's nothing that you should be disgusted by. It is just good, good yeast. Gonna get rid of the old one, keep the rubber band. And then, probably with some spilling, we'll just carefully fill that into bottles. The yeast has mostly settled to the bottom. You will get some into the liquid. Um, when you get to the end of the jug, but it's not terrible, that's fine, you can drink that. Unfiltered beer also has all the yeast in it. And it's a really nice plant, which without we wouldn't have alcohol. So as carefully as I can manage. Right, we almost recovered all four liters of it. And you might be able to see that this one is lighter in color than the other, because this one was towards the end, has more yeast in it. One way to get the least amount of yeast uh, is uh, put it in the fridge, have it cool. This will make the yeast in the bottom firm up and uh, settle uh, a little firmer, but you will always have a little yeast in it, which is no problem at all. Some people don't like it. Some people don't care. There's unfiltered beer as well. Not sure if you have that in the States, probably. There's unfiltered wine or cider. But if you want, uh, you can put that in the fridge and have the yeast settle over time. It will always be a little bit in the bottom. Off 
the bottle. Now, two things you can do now. You can use this yeast, keep using it. It's not a whole lot anymore, so I'm probably going to add uh, some fresh one. Um, pros and cons, uh, well, it's no, no cons really. The pros is that you can uh, grow your own yeast stem, basically, your own, uh, make, it, make it evolve, basically, just grow it, just keep reusing it. Uh, maybe in the hopes that, you know, it'll get stronger and make stronger alcohol, uh, convert more sugar into alcohol than the straight up yeast that we're using for one of these two. Right, let's start with, I think, the wild cherry. Those are two liter packs. So four liters total into a five liter jug, which uh, fills it up just enough to leave enough room for any foam uh, to happen and for some oxygen to, uh, to be there for the yeast. So what we do first is add more sugar. Now, I used to have like between 100 and 300 grams of sugar per liter. Um, so we're going to look at the back here. Uh, this is not very sweet, apparently. This has 63 grams per liter already. But, uh, well, depending on how, how you like your wine, you can add a lot, which makes it a very sweet, very, very sweet wine. Uh, not decided yet how much I'm going to take. Maybe 300. Makes it a... The, the less sugar you use, and uh, hitting just the amount of sugar that the yeast can convert into alcohol, the drier uh, it will taste in the end. I think we're gonna go for maybe 300 for this one. So we need to add about 240 grams, which is a... Uh, you can use all kinds of sugar. You can use brown sugar, you can use uh, sugar cane stuff, you can use um, uh, 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 sugar beet sugar, uh, or you can use just super cheap, run-of-the-mill store sugar, refined sugar, which is what we're gonna use. It helps if the liquid is warm. Right now it's pretty cold, so it uh, will take some time to dissolve, some effort. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take a ballpoint pen. So this is <laughs> exact measurements. If you, have a, if you have a scale, you can use the scales. I'm gonna mark if this thing wants to write to me. That is full, that is half, that's a quarter, give or take, and that is three quarters. So I just made made some faint markings here. That's that's full. You can see light here, dark here, sugar. Full, three quarters, half, and a quarter. I said two hundred forty, right? So it's about a quarter of this pack. So I'm gonna pour as much sugar in there till it hits the three quarters mark. Unless I'm going over. Yeah. Pull it against the light, okay, a little more. Still a little more. Super precise measurements are not required. So that's about a quarter of sugar. If you want to use fresh yeast, feel free to wash this out 
Um, you can also wash out the rest of the liquid, um, get the liquid out, uh, separate it from the yeast and then um, dilute the yeast in a little bit of water so it doesn't dry out. Um, then the yeast. I'm using uh, just a store brand super cheap dry baking yeast. This one is uh, 7 grams of yeast. Usually used for about 500 grams of flour. I'm gonna put that in completely. Well, just the yeast, not the bag. If the bag fell in, that would be bad. Because that would be some trouble getting out. Trouble pulling out. Do you have that too? Pulling it out. Okay. We'll just open this and pour it in. If you have a little extra juice, that's fine. You know, keep it. And then you can, when the wine is done after about two weeks, you can taste the juice and then taste the wine to see how differently it tastes after fermenting. That's what I often do. Uh, at least when I have other people taste the wine. Like my neighbor, I had her taste the cranberry juice and then we went to the cranberry wine. Now, since I told you I used to use buckets, 10 liter buckets, about this high. Um, that's where were you able to, you know, stir it with or whisk it after about four liters. But here, of course, there's not really a chance to whisk anything. So what we're gonna do is look for the lid. So keep the lid. Screw it shut, and then shik shik shake, shik shik shake, shake your booty, shake your booty. I can't dance, by the way, even though I have two feet. Also aerate the, li uh, the liquid a little bit. Just holding it against the light to see if the sugar has dissolved. sugar you have in it, the uh, longer it takes to uh, get it dissolve. Right. Looks fine though. So, take off the lid, take a bit of uh, cling film as the British say. It's just, you know, Put 
put it over. Take your rubber band. And done. Put it in a warmish place, 18 to 20 degrees Celsius, which is about 60-ish Fahrenheit or so. And uh, after a day or two, you should, you should start here fizzling. That is the carbon dioxide being created by the conversion of sugar to yeast. Now I'll do the same with uh, the apple juice. It's gonna be just repetitive and boring, so you might as well just tune out. Put that aside. Now this has 89 grams of sugar per liter. I'll just do some random amount. It doesn't really matter unless you use too little. I think if you use this straight up it would be a very weak wine and you know I wanted to I wanted to have a kick. So I think I'm gonna use about 300, 400 That's all right. It's not too much. Although it's it's it looks like quite a bit. It's still less than in uh, a bottle of Coca Cola. All oh, right, the yeast. So one of these usually is enough for a ten liter bucket with uh, what did I use seven eight liters every time. Should be enough to get it started. If you want to do um, larger amounts of liquids at once, then you need a starter. So what you do is you take like a bowl uh, or something, put yeast inside one of these with enough sugar, sugary liquid or the juice that you want to ferment. You have that get going in the bowl for two, three days and then you add it to your larger amount of liquid. And you can use proper air seals, just like the ones that I linked in uh, the Discord, of course. Eventually I might, I might get back to that, using proper equipment. But right now, you know, just doing this for myself mostly, and uh, maybe my neighbors. At, uh, we had a party at our company a while ago. Nobody was interested in, in trying it. They were afraid, I'm pretty sure. So I'm gonna wash these bottles out. It's important. Wash them out because that's just sugary liquid and it will turn bad after two weeks or within two weeks. Uh, and I'm going to use these bottles to fill that into a, a little bit more um, handleable uh, amounts in more handleable beverages. Uh, but wash them out because otherwise, after two weeks, wash them out, put them upside down, let them dry. And then you can use the same bottles for the wine. The wine is kind of ready after one week, but um, it still has a lot of uh, a lot of carbonization. 
which uh, I don't really like in a wine, unless you want sparkling wine, and that's fine. But then don't keep it in these plastic bottles if they're uncooled. Put them in, uh, in glass bottles. So that's four and a half liters. I was just uh, considering not using all four and a half to leave more room at the top, but you know, let's try it. Screw it closed. You got it. Four and a half liters of apple juice. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake your booty. Booty. That's my booty. I mean, you have gallon jugs in, in the States, right? Like, it's like the most common beverage that you buy. So you should have loads of them. If you're using uh, plastic buckets, make sure they are food safe plastic. It has this uh, fork and glass symbol on it. I'm looking for a thing that has it, but I don't know. If I have such a thing anymore, might not. Maybe this one. Usually they have a symbol embossed on it. Uh, yeah, I think it has it here. It's super hard to see though. Maybe if I can get it to reflect in the light somehow. It's right where I'm pointing at, but... Oh, there you can see it, there. It has a glass and a fork symbol. That is food safe plastic beverages. Right, we're done. Crappy air seal. Bit of a rubber band. So again, as the fermentation process goes, carbon dioxide is being created. The pressure from the carbon dioxide will make the cling film bulge a little bit. And if it uh, is too much pressure, it will push its way past the rubber band. And uh, that way, uh, the carbon dioxide can come out while no further oxygen can go in. And that's basically it. That's why it's so dangerous to go into old wine cellars, you know? Because of all the fermentation happening in the wine barrels, uh, all the oxygen is being used up, and all the carbon dioxide is in the cellar. So before going into a wine cellar, you would have to uh, get airflow through it. Otherwise, you go in, pass out, and die. If you're by yourself, and nobody's there to help you. And yeah, that's it. So, good luck. <laughs>